Uh, my reaction when I first heard that we were going virtual was I was nervous, I was anxious. Hey, I'm not ready yet. What do I do first? What's my first step? <sighs> it's, it's stressful. It feels like it requires, it takes more of you as a teacher to do, uh, to teach virtually. But working with my IOD and my peers in zone eight, we came up with a plan, made, made it work, practice, implementation. Um, we just hit the ground running. 100, yay. I love it. It's not as great as hands-on because I'm a touchy person. I love to interact with the kids. So it's a matter of modifying um, assignments to um, change them into things that kids can interact with um, their peers as well as myself. The more you see, the more you're going to be engaged. I would say we're at a place where we are moving steady. I wouldn't say we're all the way comfortable, but we're making it work. Please make sure you do that, okay? Get caught up. So far, I'm doing well. I, I enjoy the technology, and I believe that we just haven't really taken advantage of it. And I think that um, with this current uh, pandemic, I think that it's provided us an opportunity to really embrace it and, and really take advantage of the tools that we have uh, to definitely enhance education. That's correct. Teachers are being very creative with engaging students. Some things that I had to change from regular teaching to virtual is um, try to find more interactive um, labs for them. I would also do some experiments in class that they were able to see and suggest that they try it at home. Each of these original figures along this vector to a new location. The main tool that I'm using right now is my document camera. So I'm using the document camera and I'm able to project that to the students and I'm able to show them how to work out the math problems or just different uh, visuals that they may need to see in order to to get the, the content with that I'm trying to bring across. What did I call these points? F what? Prime. Prime, that's correct. They actually love their class, so we kind of made it a combination of synchronous and asynchronous, where they'll get their assignments, teachers will model um, the actual expectation of the lesson and provide uh, resources and examples for, the, for that lesson, and students are producing products that are, we didn't expect them to do. So when you're translating, pay attention to the vector that you are um, that you are using the rigor that is required still with being an optional is kind of built in into the way that we provide our instruction, especially for the students who are who are optional within the optional program. You guys are making it too complicated. No, it's, you remember it's just you just slide it. Team teaching for us, it is new this year. They were initially fighting the team teaching, co-teaching. They were like more like, no, she, this teacher does it this way and I have my own way. But until we actually implement it in real time, they're like, Ms. Turner, this is amazing. I see why we need two people now. What makes up the non-metals? Look in your chat box. It's clues in the chat box. Where I lack in an area, she may pick it up or where she lacks, then I pick it up. Somebody check the chat box, somebody do attendance. She'll teach this, uh, I do part of the lesson and I'll do the we do. And it's more of now they embrace the co-teaching piece. What is our percentage, Ms. Generette? Our percentage is 50% and I'll place that in the chat box. So I love team teaching because that way we both learn from each other. We learn each other's moves. It's great to work with somebody that you can get along with. And it helps the students as well as the teachers. Go ahead and go to that link. I got it now. Oh, yay. Thank you, Ms. Jenneret. To get them to participate is like, um, it's a win or lose draw situation. Well, middle school, the kind of the middle child, it just depends and each student is different. Um, I had a teacher who said that, hey, every time we log in, this student is lying in the bed. I said, well, is he paying attention? Yes, ma'am, he's paying attention, but he's lying in the bed. Can I leave and come back? Yes, I do have some concerns about students not being where they need to be because of virtual learning. Um, and that's, I guess, the disadvantage of that because I can't be there with them physically. What I try to do is call them in teams after school 
to help them one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I want you to put periodic law with that and put it together, and what do you think that means? It takes more of you as a teacher to teach virtually. With that disconnect virtually, I think that it, well, as a teacher, you have to kind of put in like two or three times as much to try to get that connection uh, with the students in order to, you know, to be able to pour in and, and to teach them and to give them what you're really trying to give them. What comes from the heart reaches the heart. So um, if I'm engaged and active in happy-go-lucky, then the students will be that way as well. But we do miss our students. Uh, the virtual world, again, like I told the student in the chat box, it's hard for the students and they, and I wanted them to know, hey, it's hard for us as adults too. And regardless of how much technology you bring in, you can never replace the teacher. You have to have the teacher in that piece because there are gaps in between that um, I've discovered that only the teacher can kind of help fill in those, those gaps. That's right, that's right. Good job, Giselle. You get the points for today. Good job.